Hello, 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 hello. I'm only a little bit late, forgive me. Hello, it's our Motivation on Monday, 6 p.m. Q&A. Opportunity to ask all those nutrition, weight loss, health, anxiety, uh, uh, motivational eating, motivational, emotional eating, all those questions. So ask me questions, questions, and let's go through them. Hello, lovely people joining. Hello, 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 lovely people joining. I hope we've had a lovely Monday. We did our live this morning, which was healthy, healthy. Hello, gorgeous people. Hello, hello. We did a lovely live this morning, which I hope as many of you did as possible. And now we're going to do our Q&A. So I'll wait for a few of you to join. Lots of you joining, lots of you joining. Summer's coming. Can't believe it now with this, where are you? I'm in London, pouring rain. Oh my goodness. But uh, uh, it's supposed to be coming. We're now in April showers, aren't we? But very soon, very soon, I'm sure it will come. And it'll come just like that, and then it's too late. So we better get in shape now, get healthy now, get feeling good now, like our tummy now, like our arms now, like our bottom now, because someone's around the corner and uh, we're gonna run out of time. <laughs> two stone in two months, couldn't be done by anybody. Her one client, she lost three stone in three weeks, that's far too quick, but she was 24 stone. So, you know, we don't wanna be, our body doesn't want to be heavier than it's supposed to be, so it loves that opportunity to get back to where it should have been. So if we are very um, much heavier than we want to be, we will lose very quickly because your body doesn't want to be in that state. It wants to be in a healthy state. That's what it's designed for. So, you know, weight can be lost very healthily, very quickly. It's not a race, but the body wants to kind of go there. So, you know, give it that opportunity. So hello, good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining me. Q&A, Q&A, Q&A. So I've got lots of questions today. And maybe I'll try and cover about four or five of them. Okay, so first question was, are oats a good breakfast choice? Ha, huh. now, clients of mine, what would I say about that? Ah! <laughs> so, remember we always talk about the glycemic index. We don't talk about calories. I'll talk about that in a minute. We know calories are just rubbish. It's quality, not quantity. And we move, so we don't need to talk about calories. But we do always need to talk about the glycemic index, as in how high the blood sugar goes up when we eat certain foods. Now, meat and proteins and fish, they all have a glycemic index, but very low. Carbs, the good carbs, fruit, vegetables, spices, seeds, herbs and pulses have GI, very low. Yeah, there are a few carbs that are of sort of the grow that aren't so good, but the carbs, I don't, they're not carbs, the sugars, the bread, pasta, rice, potato, that's the really high GI. Some of them are, well, okay. A baguette is 85 GI, white sugar's 59, honey's 87. So where does that put that? Dates are 105 GI, white sugar's 59. Beetroot is 64 GI, white sugar's 59. Sweet corn is 59 GI, white sugar's 59. Parsnips are 95. So we generally sort of say, let's go below 40 for in the weight loss stage for the right GI glycemic index because anything higher than that you're going to get a woof, poor little pancreas has to squirt out that insulin because it's too much sugar because we're not we're not farmers hunters gatherers laborers most of us are sedentary so if you have a baguette of 85 GI or a date of 105 GI your body's in trouble because you're not expending enough to have that much blood sugar going in Woo! panic pancreas squirts out that insulin gives you a high ha, 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 and then a crash because as soon as that insulin's come out it then mashes push everything into the into the fat cells then you get the dip and you could have a diabetic coma if you have diabetes but we don't yet so then the fat goes the, the, the energy goes into the fat cells to be kept there safely because otherwise we'd actually kind of explode and then you get that dip and then you've got to spend the whole time crawling crawling back up again to get back to where you were. So that's quite an exhausting process for the body. Now, so to answer your question, cereals generally, let's say a really, I better not say bad, a really inappropriate cereal like Crave, oh, the GI could be as much as 85 and white sugar's 59. So your kids, as I said the other day, are having three bowls of, three bowl, three days worth of sugar in one bowl of cereal, that's scary. Then you've got the kind of medium ones, like the kind of cornflakes and wheat bix you know, they're, they're about 65 GI. Again, we said white sugar's 59, we said 40 or below, didn't we, if possible. God's food in the fridge, rather than processed packet food in the cupboard. Now, porridge is an interesting one, because to give it credit, it is the lowest GI of 
most of the cereals and we can get lower ones. I get a lovely one from the Paleo Company, which is seeds and nuts only. I love it, love it, love it, love, love that with some soy milk or almond milk. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Um, but porridge is still a note, it still is a grain, and so porridge is 49 GI. So think about that. Now, if we were in maintenance, that wouldn't be a problem, but if we're in the weight loss stage, 49 GI, when we said 40 or below, is kind of not great. So there's the answer. So if you are then going to go for a two-hour walk, then have porridge. Kids can have porridge, because then they're going to run around all day. An athlete can have porridge because they're going to run around all day. A labourer, a farmer, hunter-gatherer can have porridge because they're going to be expending all that energy all day. But anyone who has a sedentary office job, uh, and most people really, who's not really moving that much in the day, when you have porridge, it's 49 GI. So you do get that high, woo -hoo, uh, immediately you get that kind of ooh, too much energy because you're not going to expend that if you're just sitting at your desk. And so immediately the instant red alert, red alert, red alert, how am I going to deal with this? Too much energy for not enough movement. Quick, out comes the insulin, quick grab it all, push it into the cells, down we go again. Boom, it's this whole roller coaster. So I'm afraid in the weight loss stage, unless you are a farmer hunter together, a laser athlete or child, or an actress or actor going to the gym 10 hours a day, then um, it's not a great idea. I'm really sorry. Yeah. So we know what we have for breakfast. Yeah, we avoid cereals. Cereals are processed packet food in the cupboard with the sell by date. Porridge is the better one for children or athletes or labourers, but for someone who's not moving much, it's not good 49. And so there's the answer to your question. I wouldn't have it unless you had time to go for a two hour walk afterwards. Brilliant. Yes, great. Who's got that time? Don't know. So in answer to your question, I don't recommend it. Sorry. And porridge goats go through and they sort of store fat on the way through. So, you know, oatmeal, a few seasons of oatmeal and what you're having is great because it's very fine. It goes into the bowel. It sort of stays there and bulks it up. But not porridge, not oats, if you're talking about that. And I have to say, you've got to be really careful here. If you go and get oats, yeah, and have it with almond milk, that's completely different to buying all these sticky, sticky, you know, oats, so simple or oats or whatever. They are wickedly full of sugar because oats taste disgusting on their own, so they've already put honey in it, or sugar in it, or jam sauce in it, or chocolate sauce in it, or, you know, when you look at these packets, they are wicked. Marketing, marketing, marketing. They're saying porridge is healthy, but then they're absolutely doing these sachets full of additional sugars, and that's lethal. And then if you have that with full fat milk, which is a lactose sugar, it's just lethal. So, eh, there we go, answer your question. I need to say no more, hope that helped. Thank you. Right, next question. Uh, which brand of vitamins? Which brand of vitamins? So, oh my God, it, 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 honestly, as long as your vitamin D is D3 with K2, and as long as your vitamin C you like, a vitamin is a vitamin is a vitamin. I'm not going to say any better. Um, you know, I, I have to admit though, I'm going to do this in front of you. I have to admit, with a vitamin D3 with K2, really, I'm completely sold on this brand better you. There are other ones, of course, that do a spray. Because it's just such a joy to have a spray rather than a horrible pill, isn't it? So, this is D3000 and K2. Amazing, amazing. So you've got your K2 in there. You've got a good measure. It should be 4000, but anyway, obviously, yeah, interesting. I'll talk about that. So, and then we just go, oh, one, two, three, done. Oh my goodness. That's it. That's my vitamin D for the day. So I do admit, this brand, Better You, or any of the sprays, there are others, lots of others, are just so much simpler, aren't they? And that was so simple. You don't need to be anyway. You don't have to have water. You don't have to plan it. You can have that in your handbag. So um, that's a joy. And then um, vitamin C or any of them. I mean, I basically go onto Amazon and go for best seller or best choice. There's so many different ones, but I'm not going to put one above the other because really, how do we know? I mean, a vitamin is a vitamin is a vitamin. They should all be good. Yeah, but I tend to go for the most popular ones because obviously they've got a, a history and um, a ranking and a rating. And then if you're even that fast, read the reviews on Amazon. Look for the bestseller and then read the reviews. But you know, you'll have 5,000 good reviews about most of them, so not worried. But as I said, I quite like the sprays. It's just an easy life. All right, and vitamin D and vitamin C are the main ones for weight loss, as you know. Right, next question was, uh, what diet did you start with? Okay, so I'm going to say no one should ever diet. That word, ugh. No one should ever diet. My way is a lifestyle. 
everyone says, oh my God, this is more food than I normally eat. This is easy, I can do this, this is sustainable for the rest of my life. That's all you've got to do. We're all adults. We want to be eating lots of yummy food and not feeling we're restricted. A diet is a horrible thing. And by definition, will always fail. Always. Because you haven't dealt with the fundamental thing is you're doing something wrong or your mindset's wrong. So whatever a diet is, all it can be by definition is something that you're doing that's abnormal or weird for a set period of time. And the minute you're not doing it anymore, the weight will all go back on again and often more. So I would never use the word diet because diet to me smacks at uh, eating disorders, uh, roller coaster, weight loss, weight gain, misery, depression. You know, clients come to me and they go, oh, I've tried everything and I hate it, I never lose weight. Then they're with me and they go, oh my God, I've lost all this weight and it's easy, it's gonna stay off forever. I'm like, well, it should have been easy and it should have been a pleasure. This is a pleasure. A diet is torture and horrible and you're gonna rebel and you're gonna give up. So don't ever diet, please, I'm just gonna say that. Don't ever diet, it's a disaster and you'll put on more weight afterwards. I'll give you a classic example, I always talk about this. So juicing, people say, oh, I'm going off for a week of juicing. Is that the most stupid thing you've ever heard of in your life? Juicing is sugar water. I remember I said this, if I had four oranges, yeah, I'd chop, 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 I'd be full, I'd go to the loo, I'd have lots of fibre, my body would, um, um, uh, you know, peristalsis, and you know, chum, 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 go to the loo, your, your saliva is waiting for the food in, goes the food and everything's amazing and it works and that's what it's for. And the same with veg, eat it, bite it, chew it, yeah? Mastication, peristalsis, ch -ch 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 -ch, go to the loo, you're full, it's all great. The minute you juice it, you've killed it. The fiber's gone. I mean, yes, there's a bit of fiber left, but really the, the, the chompy chompy that your body needs, yeah? To, to stagger it through is eliminated, but also you've made it into a drink. So really, you've made it into sugar water, because instead of being fruit, which is, let's say, I mean, an orange is 40 GI, it's brilliant, yeah? Or let's say you did a um, broccoli and spinach, if you eat it, 40 GI, that's brilliant. The minute you make it into a juice, so four oranges I'd be full. It takes eight oranges to make an orange juice. That's a hell of a lot of, a hell of, a lot of sugar, because it's not fibre, it becomes raw sugar, sugar water. So when you drink sugar, which is, orange juice, yeah? It goes straight into your bloodstream and it's like so your, your veins and remember I said your blood is 92% water so it's sweeter than your blood in which case the body goes in a slight panic and has to deal with it and then it fat stores and it's all upset and it's really not good. The insulin comes out whereas if you'd just eaten a couple of oranges, perfect. You'd have gone to the loo, you'd have had lots of fibre, you'd have had your vitamin C and you'd be full. So a juice diet is the most silly thing anyone can ever do and I've heard people do it and they go, oh, I lost six pounds. And the next week they put on 10. Oh my goodness. Because in that week when you're just having sugar water, carbs, but very high sugar, because you've got to have a hell of a lot of them because the juice just kills it all down and you have to have double the amount. If you were eating it, you'd be full. Um, so that becomes sugar water. And the problem with that is your body is not having fats, yeah, or proteins. It's just having sugar water. So your body turns into a carbohydrate-based metabolism completely. And then the next week, when you then start eating proteins and fats, your body's going to take a few days to adjust back because it's in a carbohydrate-based mode and it might go back into a protein-based mode. But in that time, therefore, you're going to be putting on weight. So just doing a juice start, which makes you also lethargic and weak and there's no personality, yeah, because you're not getting what you, the, the sustenance and nutrients. Food is a daytime need. You need it. You're working. So instead, you're like a, a lipid, insipid little thing, <laughs> limpid or weak, on the sugar water and then the next week you're going to put on more than you lost. So again, do not go on a fatty diet. Keto, again, unsustainable. Yeah, you're living on cream, butter, you know, it's totally unsustainable. It'll give you fatty, the fatty liver, it'll give you, give you fat, heart fat. And again, you can't do that forever. You can't spend the rest of your life eating fats. It's weird you get bowel cancer. Same with an Atkins, yeah? So, don't diet, because whatever it is, it means you're doing something unusual and weird for a certain space of time, and then as soon as it's over, you'll go right back up to where you were, maybe more. So this is this thing we call the roller coaster, yeah? Why do you want to be on a roller coaster? My plan, yeah, you're eating all the time, you're eating delicious food, everybody's very full, everybody's not being deprived, we have sauces and dressings, and food is delicious, we love it, we're eating an awful lot, and the difference is you can sustain it for the rest of your life. There's no diet, no diet, no gym, no fad. Remember my mantra, no diet, no gym, no fad. It's so simple, no diet, no gym, no fad.
That is so easy, okay? So never diet, it's not the way to go. Now, the other way people diet is they count calories. Again, rubbish, remember I always say that. So I give you a um, 1,000 calories of chocolate biscuits, that's what Weight Butchers do, here's a 1,000 calories, off you go. And I would say, no, I can give you 2,000 calories of fish and veg and yogurt and fruit and um, delicious pulses, and that would be healthy, whereas only 1,000 calories of chocolate biscuits isn't. So again, why would anyone count calories? It's weird. And what they then say is you look at your BMR, basal metabolic rate, and you take 500 calories off your basal metabolic rate. That's how many calories you can have in a day to stay the weight you are. So you take 500 calories off your basal metabolic rate, times that by seven days, that's 3,500. 3,500 calories scientifically is a pound of fat. But again, that's a diet and it's torture because why would anyone eat that little? You'd be starving. For some of my clients, taking 500, if they haven't got high skeletal muscle, taking 500 calories off their BMR would mean they're on sort of 800 calories. I mean, it's starvation. So again, a diet will kill you because you'll be miserable, you'll be starving. We all, when we starve, we rebel and then we go and binge and then we put on more and then we're miserable. I'm just, again, I'm just, I'm going to bother again. Diets don't work. So when this lady said, what diet do you start with? We don't ever diet. It's a simple answer. Now, she also said, uh, what exercise do you do starting as a beginner? So exercise, I always say, is not a skill in the sense that if you do lots of cricket, you're going to be good at it. If you do lots of football, you're going to be good at it. If you do lots of resistance exercise, you're going to be good at it. So it's not like some people are born bad, some people are born good. It's practice. So yeah, some people are naturally um, a bit fitter, but really, if you think about it, you can, they could do personal training courses now in about six weeks, which is so scary, because that is not enough training. Not enough training. So, uh, um, but you know, if you practice it, practice it. Now on my plan, my program, I give videos, I give personal advice, I analyze if you're endo, ecto, meso, I work it out for you, then I suggest what you should be doing, what visceral fat exercise, what skeletal um, fat, um, skeletal muscle exercise, what subcutaneous fat exercise, what muscle mass exercise, four very different things. So I look at your scale, analyze you, and I tell you what you should do for you, and I give you appropriate exercise for that. So a beginner on a program with me, it's very easy, because I can suss their level. So the easiest thing to remember is when you go in the gym and you do weights, that is hypertrophy. Yeah, that's to make you bulk. Personal trainer's job is to bulk you. They're going, come on, squats and lunges and weights. They're growing your, you know, a personal trainer is generally often a man and they, they want to bulk because they've got skinny thighs. Brad Pitt had a body double in Troy because men tend to have brug up here and skinny down there. So all male personal trainers are obsessed with trying to get you to use your thighs, grow your thighs. And what they're not realizing, my clients don't necessarily want to grow their thighs. A lot of them are women whose thighs may be bigger than they want. And my job is to reduce their thighs in a healthy way, not make them grow bigger. So with all my clients who start with me, I do have to analyze their body. And I would say 80% maybe have thighs bigger than they want, muscle mass. So I will then help them reduce. Now, that's a mass. Don't, don't misunderstand. Muscle mass is a mass, skeletal muscle is muscle, that's what we want, 650 muscles, as amazing as they can be, mine's really high in skeletal muscle, then you've got, you could burn calories all day, so high skeletal muscle. Muscle mass, there's a clue in the second word, mass, it's not muscle, it's a mass, of, and that is often for women who have walked the dog up hills a lot, <laughs> yeah, done sprinting in their toes a lot, women who stand forward, women who kind of walk forward, women who sit a lot, they might have quite big muscle mass in their thighs, yeah, and again, maybe more than they want. And that is not skeletal muscle, that's a mass. So I would then help them with that. And there are lots of ways of doing that. So the joy of doing a one-to-one -one is you can work with someone like me who can literally give you everything you need to know about your, uh, your muscle mass, about your skeletal muscle, about your subcutaneous fat, and about your visceral fat. And they're two different kinds of exercise. So it's very specific what I give my clients. So again, it can never be generic. You have to give it to each individual depending on what their data is. If they've got high skeletal muscle or high subcutaneous fat or high muscle mass or, uh, or high subcutaneous fat, you know, we've got to work with what we've got and improve it. So that's why one-to-one -one is really, really important. So when we're doing in the gym, 
weights and squats and lunges. That is hypertrophy and that's what a PT is doing to you. They're bulking you. You often go past the park and there's some male PT going, come on, step ups, come on, burpees, come on. And you're watching these poor women whose thighs are much bigger than they want. Of course, if you love your thighs, I'm not, you know, some women love their thighs, great, but I'm talking about my clients generally don't. They're bigger than they want them and that's their choice. You don't have to have big thighs. You can choose to not have big thighs if you want. You shouldn't be bullied. You know, it's your choice, it's personal choice. So if somebody has chosen to reduce their thighs, that's their choice. And that is with a sort of, well, that, that's actually posture and standing and certain exercises. But with bulking in the gym, that will definitely grow your thighs if you're doing squats and lunges, the man way, not the pippa way, the man way, squats and lunges, using your quads, using your quads, they'll step up and go, oh, I'm needed, like you say, Bolt needs his all the time, look at they're beautiful, aren't they? So your thighs will grow in response, but you're not necessarily gonna to want to be, look like a sprinter. He's beautiful, but not all of us want thighs like that. So, um, so we would look at resistance, the resistance I do is metabolic resistance, for my clients, what I'm doing is the opposite of what they do in the gym because I'm not doing hypertrophy, I'm doing reduction. I'm doing making you leaner, slimmer, burning more calories. I'm making you more sinewy, I'm making you more toned. In the gym, what they're doing is hypertrophy. So it lets you do, oh, I can lift three weights and then stop. You see that all the time. Oh, I can lift four weights and then stop stacking, stacking, wrecking and pyramiding. Don't worry, I trained in all of it 100 years ago. Uh, that is so heavy, the weight, that you can't lift 12. And what you're doing then is you're ripping the little fibers in the muscle and then overnight they grow stronger, they've ripped and they repair and you've bulked. So Dwayne, The Rock, Johnson, Zac Efron, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Gosling, they're all doing that kind of thing in the gym because they want to physically create uh, Popeye. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and that's what generally men want to do because they're all skinny down here. So they're going to be lots of squats and lunges whoa, and lots of heavy weights because they want to get more bulked because they think that looks good. Yeah, it does. Amazing. Beautiful if you like that kind of thing. Super. But my clients don't want to be more bulked. A lot of them are too bulked already and they want to go the other way. And that's my job. I make my clients leaner. Yeah. I have very high skeletal muscle, but I'm not bulked, am I? But I have very high skeletal muscle. So whatever I eat just gets eaten. I can eat anything I like because I've got high skeletal muscle. So that's why I'm giving you a better metabolism. So the resistance I do in my lives Monday and Thursday is metabolic resistance, which is low weights, high reps, and it's constant. It's constant. We don't really have a break. We just keep going 30 minutes without stopping. So it's, it's, it's metabolic resistance, yeah, which is making you leaner. The opposite is this hypertrophy, which is making you bulk. So you make your choice. You can tell me, I, I've bulked some plants. I've got a couple of plant male plants who actually lost too much. Um, lost too much weight and then I end up, I, I, what, I, what I do though is I get rid of the muscle mass in the wrong places and then I increase their skeletal muscle in the right places so they're looking good in the right places, all the right places, rather than bulky in some places and skinny, I get them looking good all over because again metabolic, um, metabolic resistance works on your metabolism so you get leaner yeah, and then you can start doing the hypertrophy once you've got there but you don't want to be doing hypertrophy when you're overweight because all you're going to do is bulk yourself. So it's a bit more complicated than th people think, which is why you need the one-to-one, -one, because there's a lot of understanding going on there. So we're doing metabolic resistance, not hypertrophy, which is to bulk you. So that's very different. So when the lady asked, what exercise did we do for a beginner? I'd start very, very gently. Um, I give my clients loads of loads of videos and help, but if you're doing standing exercise, a beginner, I'll always get them standing to start with. Some people can't go on the floor. If you're heavier than you want to be, it's very hard to put your weight in your arms. If somebody's 15 stone, I'm never going to put them on the floor and get them to do stuff, you know, because the wrists can't cope and it's just too difficult. So if we're a real beginner, what we'll do is start with everything. Standing. Da, 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 da. You know, you can start with 1.5 kilos and then get to two and then get to three. Yeah, we can do lats and we can do... Um, we can do triceps and biceps and deltoids, but really what we're thinking is pecs, triceps, belly, bottom. So I call it bat, boobs, belly, bottom. Those are the four. Because the minute you start feeling these babies, your quads, you're gonna grow them. And as I said, 80% of my clients don't want to grow them. So that's, we've got to really focus on that. So a be beginner exercises, I examine what, how beginner they are, and I work with them on that, and I give them very low weights and very um, simple exercises to do, 
but just like any skill, tennis, riding, swimming, you get very good very quickly. You, you know, six weeks you can be a pro. So, you know, so, you know if you did four hours a day for six weeks, you'd be a pro, you'd be a pro. It's not, it's not a, a skill, it's practice, yeah? And that is going some. So you, you could be a pro. So it, it's, you know, really, very quickly, you can be very good at exercise, don't worry. I think it's a fear thing, because actually it's incredibly simple. Animals do exercise all the time. Children, babies, everybody does exercise all the time. Adults can do exercise all the time. Remember George Bernard Shaw, it's not the aging that stops you, it's the stopping that ages you. So anybody, even at 60 or 70 or 80, you can still start exercising never too late. So I'll work with you on how much of a beginner you are. But as I said, don't worry, you will very quickly not be a beginner. But of course, if you only do it once a week, it will take you a very long time. So that's your choice. It depends on your commitment. And then once you get stronger and the weight comes off, then we start doing more floor resistance, which is more, more difficult because let's say you're 12 stone, that's 12 stone being used. You'd never use 12 stone weights in the gym. So your own, own body weight is great. All my exercise you can do at home. You don't have to pay for a gym. You don't have to go anywhere. Again, no diet, no gym, no fad is my mantra. No diet, no gym, no fad is my mantra. I show you how you can do this all at home and fit it into your busy lifestyle because you don't really need to do that much. We don't really even talk the word exercise. I talk about fitness, <laughs> yeah? It's because you only need to do a bit of panting. You need to do a bit of resistance and you're done, yeah? And we stand. So there's lots of really easy ways. You don't have to go to the gym and spend hours. You don't have to do fitness classes. You certainly don't want to be doing anaerobic because that's sugar burning, not fat burning. You know, fat burning is a level lower, so it's really not hard. Uh, in fact, I actually positively go against any kind of ultra fit. <laughs> yeah, because that's sugar burning. That's not what we're after. As I said, we're after fat burning. So very, very easy when you're working on a one-to-one -to, -one to get the exercise. That's absolutely spot on. That's why I say, even if you only do the four week plan, do it because at least I can tailor make the, the plan on your ability, yeah? So don't worry if you're a beginner with exercise because everybody was a beginner at some point and it's not a skill, it's just practice. Very quickly you'll get it. The more you do, the better you get. I had one client, she hated resistance when she started it and by the end of her 12 week plan, she loved resistance and she's crazy about it and she lost three stone. You know, she was crazy about resistance. She hates it to start with. In fact, anyone who says they hate resistance, I say, you've obviously never done it. And they go, yeah, you're right, I've never done it. And then once they start doing it, you just feel that benefit. So suddenly you're feeling those sort of the arms waking up and the sinews. You're thinking, hey, I'm kind of warm in there. This is a nice feeling. Yeah. And then the belly as well. You're kind of going, oh, I can feel that getting warm. I can feel that toning up. I can feel that. And you start to love the fact that your clothes are looser. Yeah. Your arms are less bulked. Your bottom's less bulked. Your quads are less bulked. Yeah, your inside thighs are more toned up. Your pecs are <laughs> firmer. Yeah, so anybody does resistance, you can't fail but feel good because it's a kind of drug. Again, exercise is dopamine, exercise endorphins. So you get the high from the exercise and then you get the kind of dopamine effect of, the, of that lovely feeling of, oh, I'm feeling kind of warm, I'm feeling kind of ripped, I'm feeling kind of healthy. And the figure changing, you can physically see it changing. So it becomes quite, quite addictive. And that's not a bad addiction, is it? All the addictions we can have. That's one of the better ones. So, you know, I think it's very important that we understand how easy the uh, movement journey, let's call it movement, the movement journey in a weight loss plan is. It doesn't need to be gym, doesn't need to be manic exercise. You don't you need to do much. Yeah? And I'll guide you through that. So... Again, don't be worried about that. What exercise do we start with? We start with the basics, but very quickly you become experienced. And as I said, never diet. Rewind this, go back, have a look at it when I post it. Never diet, and I talked all about that. So, we've talked about diet, we've talked about vitamins, we've talked about oats. Oh, yes, it always help us. So, last thing is pricing. I don't ever just say pricing because there's too many variables again. Are you doing the four week plan, six week plan, eight week plan, 12 week plan? There's even a, a one hour plan. Um, and then you've got all, all the stuff that comes with it. So it, 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 we, you know, I always have a phone chat. Anyone who wants to have a phone chat about which plan for them, and we can work out a package because obviously it depends which bits. Um, and so there's too many variables. There's no sort of, you know, the, the price is what you need. So if you need a 12 week plan, I'll recommend it because that's a lot of emotional eating help. Eight week plan, if you've got, you know, two stone to lose or six week plan, four week plan is mainly for people who are in pretty good shape because in a month you can only lose a stone. Um, 
and they maybe know quite a lot, but they need some guidance. They don't need emotional support because they're only going to get four sessions. Six weeks is great. You get the four to get all the knowledge and you get additional two, which is motivation, accountability, goals, positivity, purpose, uh, challenges. Um, four week plan, you only just get those four sessions. So I'd always go for more. The eight week plan is amazing because you get eight sessions with me and we've got lots of time for continuity. If you have a wobble, I can talk you through everything. And we've got lots of time. We're looking at scale eight times going, right, this is what we're going to do now, right? This is what we're going to do now. You know what I mean? So you can really get mega results. And then obviously the 12-week plan is the best of all in the sense you get 12 sessions and there's a lot of time for emotional support, you know, motivation, accountability. Um, people need that. We need that. We all need someone to help us. We can't do this on our own. Yeah, as I was saying, you're not going to just jump on a horse and ride off. You need the coach. You're not just going to be an amazing cook. You need the coach. So the 12-week plan is just life-changing and the 8-week plan and the 6-week plan, but just life-changing because by the end of that, you've got everything sorted, you've lost all the weight, you're feeling good, you're really in control, you've got the knowledge and the power, and you've got the 20 videos I send all my private clients, and you've got all the other all the other stuff which gives you that power, you've got your scale, so you are then completely in control for the rest of your life, and then as I said, I do a little motivation boosters if you want one a month, or one every two weeks, or even one a week, 15 minutes, just to keep that continuity, keep that accountability, keep that support, uh, you know, and people generally, when they think they're going to check in, they tend to always stick to the plan. Uh, yeah, we all do. If we've got, we've got someone we've got to be accountable to, we're not going to muck up, are we? So it's really important. So the 12 week plan is brilliant in that sense because you get a lot more help and emotional support. But then, as I said, you can go on to a, a booster. So hope that helps. So if you want to talk pricing, just get in touch with me and I'll talk pricing with you. But I always talk about all the plans, answer all your questions because that's obviously the important thing that you, we do the right plan for you. I give you the right plan for you. So I need to know quite a lot about your uh, situation. You know, if you've got um, issues with stress or lack of sleep or inflammation, that can change things too. You know what I mean? So you always have to have these one to ones have these conversations. So really, really important that we talk about it before we commit. So anyway, or you can commit if you know what you want to do. But what I mean is if you've got any questions, have those questions and then I make the price relevant for what you need for you. That's the one-to-one. -one. It's totally personal, bespoke and designed just for you, no one else. Okay, so sorry that I've just joined because it's now 6.35 and I'm supposed to do 6 till 6.30. Did any of you think it should be 6.30? It's always 6. Hello, those that are joining. Hello, hello, lots are joining. But it doesn't matter because now I'll post this live. You can watch the whole thing. Should only be 30 minutes, it's now 35. Uh, and I hope that answers a few questions and Please give me lots more and lots of comments and lots of feedback because I love it all and I'm here to help. So, you know, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help. Um, so I enjoy giving answers to questions and I enjoy helping as many people as I can because summer's coming. So, thank you for joining me, lovely people. Here's my collagen again. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Go onto my website. It gives you the name, the brand. Who to buy it off? Because I don't get involved in that. I don't want to. You know, I never, I never do selling. Yeah, because that's your choice. Yeah, um, I'm a nutritionist. I'm not a collagen person, but I have a collagen person you can talk to if you want a collagen person to talk to. Collagen is, as you know, forty percent of your ligaments, your tendons, your muscles. Eighty percent of your dry skin weight is your bones. It's, it's your skin. It's phenomenal. Yeah. So the marine one for the outside and the, the uh, bovine for the inside. Hello, lots of people joining. I'm sorry, I'm going to finish. Sorry. But loving you joining, and please come at six next time. More people joining. Please come at six next time, but I'm going to post this live now and you can watch it. And then we then put it on my YouTube channel so you can watch it there afterwards as well. So you're never going to miss out. Don't worry, you're never going to miss out. Mwah. Love you. Thank you for joining me. Been wonderful. Really looking forward to seeing you on Thursday morning, eight o'clock. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I can't do that. You're supposed to do one thumb, aren't you? It's very uncool to do two. I don't care if I'm uncool, frankly. Uh, 56, maybe 57. So lots of love, and I will say goodbye. And um, Speak to you soon. Thank you for joining me. Lots of love. Bye bye.